Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Yeah, welcome to Drinking Bros. I'm on fire today, D'Anthony. Um, I feel I feel hot today. Not sure I can co-sign that. Well, you should. Um, here's the deal, kids. If you watch the show, we drink a lot of Trulies. I'm a little, I'm a little Truly girl myself, and we drink a lot of White Claws as well. I'm a I'm a White Claw man. Um, but we double, sometimes triple up on sets because we have long interviews. We never know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. I don't have anything to keep these cool. Right. And you said, hey, man, there's a company that specifically makes <clears throat> fucking holders for these goddamn My lady friend is obsessed cold. with them. Yes. Completely obsessed with them. She has like I, a couple, I think. She, she actually just ordered two more that came in today. So 30. And I was oh, like, yeah, yo, yeah. who makes these? Um, let's get them on the fucking show. It's Dylan Jacob. Uh, the company is Brewmates, B-R-U-M-A-T-E dot com. Mm-hmm. They're making all this shit. I've seen it everywhere. Yeah. I, I just didn't know where, where it came from. And you were like, dude, let's just call him and get him on the show. Yeah. Dylan, welcome to the show, my man. How are you? I'm good, guys. And uh, it looks like you're both drinking White Claw, and, and they're both probably warm. Uh, yeah, they, they are. I'm a, first of all, I want to I want to state to the audience, I'm a little truly girl. But D'Anthony brought in uh, some some different white claws. Got some uh, watermelon now. Watermelon, tangerine, lemon. Those are all new flavors. Mm-hmm. Mango. What made you get into this? <clears throat> is, is it the influx of dudes who are drinking seltzers now, where it's just like, all right, cool, man. It's become a thing because it's definitely crossed over. I would say. Yeah, so it's actually funny. I launched this company in 2016, and it, our first product was not for slim cans. It was actually for 16 ounce cans. Um, so I, I was super into craft beer, and all the cans that I drank out of were 16 ounce cans. I'm also a Miller Lite guy. I drank 16 ounce Miller Lite cans and bottles, and no one made anything to keep those cold. So the last like quarter of that beer, no matter like I'm from Indiana, so you know we'd be at like Indy 500. It's fucking 95 degrees mm-hmm. outside and it, even if i'm drinking a beer in five minutes the last quarter of that beer is just cold. it's not it, it's not cold like it's warm and uh so i just found myself like tossing the beer three quarters of the way through and grabbing a cold one and uh so the idea behind brewmate was like creating a bunch of different uh insulated can and, and bottle holders designed to keep all of your adult beverages cold so we started with the 16 ounce can version um the hop slater slim came next it was actually for a of ultra uh, so I launched that uh, in no 2017. Shit. Were they the first ones to do these like skinny cans like this? They, yeah, them in Red Bull. So I launched it for Red Bull and for Mick Ultra. Mm. And uh, the day that it launched was uh, so it was August 2017, and it was just when White Claw was starting to become a thing. Mm-hmm. And our first batch sold out in like 24 hours. And I was like, "What the fuck? Like that many people are drinking skinny cans?" I didn't really know about White Claw at this point. I didn't realize it was as big as it was. And uh, from there, that that sector just continued to grow. And now almost every major can uh, or every major uh, alcohol company in the world has some sort of slim can. So Mm -hmm. it's like our number one selling product. Yeah. Why why is that? Just because it's easier to fit on the shelf and you can put more products in the stores? Or is it, you know, just a sexier can for the ladies? And then all of a sudden it's crossed over to dudes. Yeah, so the can idea started with ergonomics in mind. So your short fat cans just aren't that easy to hold for people. (laughs) with small hands not necessarily just females but just people in general um and so like introducing a slim can it was just easier to hold like you can almost cuss the whole thing um and so yeah i mean uh, you know when the product first launched it was it was mainly uh for like mick ultra and red bull and so our core demographic for that was actually guys and then with white claw we saw a huge influx of girls buying the product and now we see obviously guys buying it too for two reasons Mm -hmm. one to make sure their (laughs) seltzers are cold and two to hide the fact that they're drinking seltzers yeah no see i like it i like the slim can because it makes my hand look bigger Mm -hmm. which there's a kind of there's a connotation (laughs) that it's like it's almost like uh the reverse of getting jacked off by a midget Sure, 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 sure. Or whatever we're supposed to. Well, little, dwarfs little have real, real size hands. I want to. What do you mean, real make, size hands? It's not a midget hand. It's a, <laughs> it's a real size hand. So, all right. Well, for the you point dwarfs of is, out there, um, sorry for the the racial I just don't dwarfism. Know. I just don't know. I'm ignorant. That's my problem. Yeah, it is. You but should I, really study up on it. I'm not going to. Uh, <laughs> but I do like White Claw a lot. Hey, I, look, any seltzer that tastes good, I don't care. If it's White Claw or any other one, I don't care which one it is. Yeah, we're, we're a honest. big fan. When he said Small Hands, by the way, I think he didn't know. You know we had a porn star on our show named Small Hands? Mm. No, I did not have never heard of there that. There is yeah. a male porn star named Small Hands, <laughs> and the guy is fucking huge. 
Uh, I mean, not only cockwise, but uh, in the porn industry. <laughs> yeah, like, he just won a bunch of awards, too, in, a, in addition. He did. Big. And uh, we have a female spinoff of this show called Drinking Broettes Podcast, which is great. And if, you don't, if you're not subscribed, you should out there. Um, and one of the co-hosts, Tiffany Hart, had said, <coughs> I've, I've got this fetish for this one male porn star, and his name is Small Hands. And I surprised her, and I brought him on the show when we were in Las Vegas. So he came on the show and was great. Um, These products, by the way, I'm just browsing your site, are very reasonably priced. Like, I, I worked at a co- Black Rifle Coffee. All of our people know that. Yeah. It's a very large coffee company. They sell Promo a lot of code Drinking Bros 20 at BlackRifleCoffee.com. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. You bet. The, uh, this uh, Growler gift set with the two uh, tumbler glasses for 60 bucks on your site. That's crazy. That's a great deal. Like, that Growler yeah, sells we- retail for $64 most places, 64 65 bucks. Yeah, our growler is fifty dollars. They're actually on sale right now, uh, so we just have like a spring sale going on. But mm-hmm. typically, that sets like eighty five. So we do some bundling and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But even our normal products, like the Hop Slater Slim for the Slim cans, is between twenty and twenty five dollars. Uh, it's the number three best selling item on all of the Amazon. It teeters between number two and three daily. Wow. Um, but yeah, I mean, I came into the market, and the idea behind it was like one, releasing products that no one else had released yet, and then two, releasing it at a price point where it was affordable for everyone. Um, and also where like no one else could really come into the market and undercut us mm-hmm. on price. Um, so I just, I wanted to kind of be in the middle where it wasn't too expensive. It wasn't too cheap. Um, we were able to, to keep the quality there, but also make sure that we were protecting ourselves from copycats. Yeah. These slims are selling what for a 20 to 23, 25 bucks a piece. That's not bad at all. Yeah, man. Yeah. And I'll just, it, it, you're the only one doing it. Yeah. Well, the yeah, only, the only major yeah. company doing. It. I'm sure there's somebody trying to knock it off, but yeah, I, do I haven't you, seen any. But can you get a patent on the size of a can for a co- like a? Oh, you can't. Okay, no. gotcha. No, so so like Yeti just launched their version of the can cooler like four or five weeks ago. Um, so you can't patent the size, but we can patent like our gasket, for instance. I don't. Is there video on here or just audio? It's both. both. Yeah, both, man. It's both. All right. So like on a, a Yeti can cooler, for instance, you have to like unscrew the gasket and then put the can in and screw it back on. Mm. So, like, our products all have push black technology, so you just push it in. I would turn this upside down, but it's open, so beer would pour everywhere. But uh, it, it's our it's our push black technology, so it just holds it in place, and whenever you're done, you just pull it out by the tap. So, like, that is patented. <laughs> um, but in terms of, like, patenting the size of it, there's no way to do that. Um, all of our products, though, all of our beer koozies actually double as tumblers, so you can buy a lid for it and turn it into a drink glass. Oh, so you can, like, pour your beer directly inside. And that is actually patented. It's like no one else can actually launch a beer koozie that can also be used as a tumbler. God, um, that's dope, it. man. Yeah, that is sweet. I mean, I guess the real yeah. question that our fans would be curious about is how do we get a fucking Drinking Bros logo on some of these? Yeah, man. I mean, that's Jesus, that's, that's the next that's the next level right there. Uh, I feel like you're living the dream, dude. Yeah, you get to drink all day and test this shit out, right? Yeah, I'm head of product development and design, so it's literally my job. God damn it, that's amazing. So you just show up to work like at fucking noon, pissed drunk. Hey, these are good. These are good. Just throw it at somebody. <laughs> it fits. Give me the next one, you fuck. It fits, Susan. It fits. Um, you can't say Susan with a hard S like that, though. Thuthin. No, like, I mean, Karen with a hard K. Why did you, why did you make me say it like Mike Tyson? I didn't make you do anything. Thuthin. I made a comment, you reacted. That's what happened. Okay. I'll make another one. Uh, Dylan Jacob, that's two first names. Is that weird for you growing up? It's got four first names, actually. Super, super weird. So there's a couple things that happen. So I actually have two middle names. Mm-hmm. So it's Dylan, Michael, Anthony, Jacob. Oh, so you and, have four uh, first that's, names. That's a family of four. That's or a family of four. Yeah. Him or one guy. Yeah. yeah. So, so when I was growing up, I had two things. One, people would either call me Jacob or Dylan. Uh, someone now, if they read my ID, they don't know what to call me. Or people add an imaginary S onto my last name. So instead of Jacob, they call me Jacobs. Yeah. Because th- their brain just can't comprehend the fact that I have a first name for a last name. So, yeah, I've had to deal with that pretty much my entire life. My parents basically couldn't figure out who to uh, give their middle name to from either side. So, like, which one of their parents? So they gave me both. So that's how I got the middle name. Mm. And then uh, my last name, actually, my grandpa moved here in 1955 as an immigrant and wanted an American name. So he... Uh, he changed his last name to Jacob. Uh, <laughs> like apparently, the most American name he could come up with, and that's how we arrived at Dylan Jacob. Where did he? Where did that's he immigrate from? Yeah, where did he come from? He came from Palestine. Oh so shit! So okay. my my 
Uh, so he's from Palestine. My grandma on the other side is from Poland. She was actually rescued from a Polish concentration camp um, during World War II. And then on my mom's side, they're all Italian. So I'm kind of a mix of a bunch of different stuff. Nice. That's very American to be a mix of a bunch of stuff. It is. We're a melting pot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah literally. <laughs> we are a melting pot. Uh, that makes me hungry they all, for They all moved now. here within the same 10-year period between 1950 and 1960. So we're second generation yeah, yeah. and all, all four of those names that you have are in the book of like names where you're yeah. like name baby names those are the first four the only surprising up. one is dylan i guess because it's the only one that's not a saint i believe yeah uh because i'm my middle name is michael as well yeah i guess on the same part they just knew how it was gonna turn out so. oh oh <laughs> so you're well i mean we're pieces of shit yeah but you're the you're the you're the angel of the family no, i think he's saying he's not no no, no i was saying dylan. the reverse yeah. oh my, shit yeah because dylan is not a, a, a saint's name you're a horrible human all right good so yeah at least he's one of us <laughs> uh, look one of us let's start chanting one of but us one, one of us, us. <laughs> just like pouring Shame. white claw all over your head yeah fuck you i mean we're in quarantine times like we, we're doing what stuff's we, getting we weird man to. it's I, getting yeah, weird some dude cr- fucked up all day some dude almost crashed into our building earlier yeah that's true. Well, we had a full-on police chase, 30 cars, the whole thing. Yeah. He missed all of our cars in the parking lot by one foot. Stole a truck from an, a, a college kid's apartment building mm-hmm. uh, on a bender. Um, talked to – I'm not going to say who I talked to, but yeah. uh, they said it was they, – they think it was crack cocaine, uh, which, you know, crack's a new one. Yeah, are I you don't gonna, hear too much crack around Are here. you going to make uh, an insulator for crack cocaine? That'd be great. No, I think crack is served up hot, actually. It's, a, it's, a, it's like a <laughs> double-walled crack pipe. Can you imagine? Oh, that? The brewmate double-walled crack pipe. You'll never burn your hands again, you piece of shit. I want uh, Let a, me d- do a double-nostril gold snorter for Coke. <laughs> you know, that way you can go all twosies Well, it's double-nostril, but there's like four at the bottom. So you yeah. can snort four lines at once through. Taking four yeah, lines. Let's do it. Hey, you, you can call can, it the menorah. You can hire us for your marketing team if you want. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I do I do product development and design. So what I can do is I can help you bring those to life, but they just won't be branded underneath our name. <laughs> obviously. Obviously. And if you need a drug guy for drug paraphernalia, Dan Holloway's your guy. I know some things. The about. menorah would be great for, you know, six to eight lines of Coke at a time. Yeah. Just make it, you know, sterling silver, something nice, something classy, obviously. If you can afford Coke. You can afford a nice Coke store. And I feel like if you pull out a custom item to do drugs with and it's not nice, you're, everyone's like, what are you, some kind of fucking drug you're addict? Fucking but if you fucking junkie, yeah. If you pull out a nice little, you unzip the thing, you pull out just the most pristine needle anybody's ever seen, they're not going to mind you shooting up heroin at their children's birthday. Not party. at all, dude. Not at yeah. all. So um, it's all about presentation is what I'm saying. That's why you make these things look nice. It is. It's kind of like head shops. When you walk into a head shop, you know, and you're like, oh, shit. Look at that one. It's it's hand blown glass with like five dragons popping out of the end of it. You're like, eh, am I smoking weed or am I at an art exhibit right now? You know? Yeah. So fun fact, I actually have a friend that specializes. He's an art dealer, and uh, he specifically specializes in finding buyers for high end hand blown uh, pipes. Mm-hmm. Oh shit! So when I first I first met him, he told me like, hey, I'm an art dealer. I was like, cool. Like, what kind of art do you sell? And he shows me this fucking sculpture. It's like an AK-47 six feet long hand-blown glass and uh, i was like is that a bone because i saw a, a little bowl at the top and he was like yeah it's a pipe and turns out that's literally what he specialized in is selling like 200 to five hundred thousand dollar glass pieces Holy to like shit. people all over the world that's great who apparently have enough money to buy five hundred thousand dollar uh, bongs. Well, there you have it, yeah. kids. You can be rich enough to spend a quarter million dollars on a bong and still smoke weed every day. Apparently, there is a reason to wake up every morning, and well, that's it. You know, that's that helps. It, look, if you're that rich, why not? Why not? Do you do, do you guys do <laughs> custom shit at Brewmates? <laughs> yeah, we don't do five hundred thousand dollar pieces, but <laughs> no, but we, we we do customization and stuff like that. Yeah. Is there anything <laughs> you would turn down? So Father's Day is coming up. I'm assuming Dan's got a kid. We don't really know. Obviously, <laughs> I wanted to get him a nice uh, truly holder. Right? Uh, these are my these are the trulys that I love. A truly holder with Casey Anthony on it. Mm. Would you be able to do <laughs> that for me? <laughs> I don't think so. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> we well, because the issue. So for us specifically, like we do, we only do corporate customization. Mm. So we do forty-eight units minimum. Okay. Um, but we have like a ton of partners that do laser engraving and stuff like that. So like, if you go on Etsy or whatnot, you mm. can find people that do just like one-off pieces. And I'm sure 
they'll probably do whatever art you send to them. I'm going to need 48 of them, I feel. I'm going <laughs> to yeah. need four, a set of 48 <laughs> yeah. Casey Anthony heads. <laughs> Uh, on some some truly holders. Did you see you. that? Do you see those pictures of her holding her friend's kid at that restaurant? No, I didn't. Yeah. So the, these pictures I, came I out. I can't believe one she has friends and two that she's allowed near children. Yeah, yeah you, would, you would think they would. She wants to have another one. Give she's, it a go. She said that she wants to have more kids. Uh, <laughs> Second chances, Dan. I feel like uh, every time I hear that, you know that meme where it's like round two fight. And it plays the fucking. <laughs> yeah. It plays the Street Fighter music. Doo, 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 doo. It's like her holding that baby. That's round two fights. Yeah, because oh. uh, she killed her children. Yeah, she, her child, she, yeah, she killed her child and put it in a trunk. In, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like it should definitely be illegal for her to have another child. Uh, yeah, so do I. So hypothetical. Let's let's go down this trail. OJ well, Simpson calls you. And says he wants to make some some brewmates. Do you do you say no? And it's just like, two isotoner gloves. Yep. Uh, uh, but they're 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 kind of because he's from San Francisco, so it's West Side. Right? Yeah. Well, no, I was saying like doves, like because oh, it's also doves, yeah, like, yeah. hey, you're it's it's life leading into death. That's what it is. It's it's, it's two isotoner gloves as a dove. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm I'm what I call like a professional middleman, and so uh, I I like to stay pretty even keel on most topics. When it comes to OJ Simpson, I, I keep my personal opinions out of that one. So I would send him to one of our partners who does engraving and say, "Hey, listen, you can work with one of them, but we can't really do this direct." And I'd probably make up an excuse as to why, but well, I, I can't say that I. <laughs> you you got to assume he would use the proceeds to look for the real killers, right? Yeah, because that's what he's doing yeah. every day. He's been doing that, that for golf course in oh, uh, twenty five years now. Yeah, it's been, man, he's been looking for the real killers. This well, I haven't, time. I haven't heard a status update on that hunt lately. Oh, on the the real killers thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still hasn't found him. Yeah, so I can go ahead and clue you in on that one. Yeah, he, there's a, he could find it in our bathroom. He just looked in the mirror in there. It's right yeah, in there. Yep, yep sure so, is. Uh, <laughs> sure is. What's the weirdest request you've had, by the way? Dude, I mean, we don't get that many weird requests, honestly. Like, again, because we mostly do corporate customization. It's mostly mostly just for corporate companies, so it's a lot of, like, company logos. We don't really get a whole lot of slogans or anything like that, so I can't say I have too many weird stories there. Yeah. But we do have reverse weird stories. Like, uh, so we, we used 3PLs to ship all mm -hmm. of our products. So <clears throat> uh, one of my best friends actually owns a company called Shipmunk, and they do all of our shipping and warehousing. And they also ship for, like, 400 other companies. So, uh our customers will randomly get like really weird shit in their packages when uh, an employee like swaps shipping labels and stuff like that. So we have had customers reach out and be like, Hey, I ordered a beer koozie, but got like a dildo. Um, ah, and and yeah. that's, that's kind of hard to explain away. We have to like explain to the customer one, what like a three PL is and sure. two, you know, why this arrived in their package. Um, but most of the time customers just kind of laugh at it. I yeah. just, you know, I mean, it's not that much yeah. bigger than a dildo. No, a can of white claw is not that much bigger. Yeah, than but a dildo. that thing is meant to go around this. So that's that. I mean, look, you're working with a hog at that point. Yeah, you're working overtime. I just, uh, I'm just one. saying, like, if you're creative enough, it doesn't you really can do matter. anything. Yeah, it doesn't matter what comes in the mail. Yeah, you can do anything. You if, know? You, if it can fit inside you, then it can fit inside. That's the the point, right? I believe. Yeah, is the point. Yeah, I because I was thinking about getting something engraved with my own baby dick on it. <laughs> Um, my, my dick is a baby. I was looking at some uh, photos of myself as a child, and I was like, oh, man. Yeah, look your, at, your parents made a mold. Yeah, it. Look, yeah, look at me. That, that's yeah. where I was in the tub. And Which I thought was weird. And, and they I were like, we weird. have a mold right yeah. now. And they were like, I was like man, what? I, I miss it. You know, I miss seeing it every he day. He was flipping through his baby book, and there's pictures and whatever, handprints on paper and ink. Yep. And then there's like this plaster cast mold of his of a dick. And he's like, is that mine? Is that mine? Yeah. And they were like, yeah. yeah. So I think every family should do I've that. I've never their heard child. of that one. Yeah, so well, that's because we just made it up. It's a, no, it's it was <laughs> it was at my parents' house, and I have it. And I was like, man, I would like to yeah. make a a nice koozie out of this, you know? just to honor your parents. A sippy cup, like hey, you made you this will. dick. You made this dick, mom and dad. Yeah. Shit. But it, here's the thing: if you put a little screwable cap on the top, and it's my own baby dick, and I'm drinking out of it, is that a crime? You know, uh, I want to remember who I used to be and the man I've now become. Legally speaking, I don't think it's illegal, but I think it's a crime against humanity. Could be. Which is another situation. I had a beautiful baby dick, though. I, I stared at it for hours. Um, and I know that probably sounds weird, Dylan. You probably are asking yourself <laughs> what I walked into today. But uh, 
Well, it's the it's the quarantine times, and that's what we do over here. Uh, we reminisce yeah. over over who we used to be. And I'm going to tell you, my we, my four year old penis was something spectacular to see. <laughs> Good for you. How do you you can't really we, you can't we, set a we, guy from, up to have from, from a customization standpoint though. When you were talking about that, we have had two requests that like popped into my mind. So one, we had someone DM us last week and ask <laughs> if we could make them a squirrel koozie because apparently there's like a viral video going around of someone drinking a beer can out of a squirrel. I don't know if you've seen this I or not. I do, and there's another guy who who uh, keeps the baby squirrels in his house. His name is Mickey J. Polk, and he got arrested in, in Alabama for feeding meth to his squirrels. Oh, yeah, that's right, because he was trying to mm-hmm. get them, the squirrels to attack people. Yes, correct, yeah. correct, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. right. So he we, was we know training killer squirrels. Yeah. yeah, which is, you know, if you're going to train a killer animal, probably go with squirrels, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Asia's sending over <laughs> free murder hornets. I would lo- would love to fucking send them some goddamn meth squirrels, you know? Oh, I, I'm still... Let's start the, trading animals. I still go with the uh, the beavers. War pop, propaganda beavers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, these, are beaver, these are fighting beavers that you force them into a room and make them watch Nazi war propaganda yep. and then release those into the world. But they're on crystal meth the whole time, yes, too. Yes, yes. Or PCP. What, meth I don't know is a I big part of, of yeah. training <laughs> animals to do vicious things. What was yours? Uh, well, first, I'm pretty sure meth was developed in like World War One or two to make... By the Nazis Soldiers. in World War II, yeah. 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 So yeah, I, it only makes sense that we've now used it on animals. Yeah, that instead. logic tracks. For sure. What, what What was your question? I don't the know. Squirrels. Actually, no, I don't the, know what you, the question You were saying was. you were making some customized squirrels for some people. <laughs> oh, no. I And then, like, Larry and Tyser, do you know who he is? Oh, yeah. Send it. Send it. Yeah, the fucking send it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he, been on the he, show. He DM'd us and asked if we can make him a fucking denim koozie. Now I kind of want a denim koozie. I do shit. too. Yeah, is that possible? Do you yeah. know that? he only wears denim? I was like, I mean, we we tried. Like, we created. We ended up sending him uh, like a hop slater with a denim sleeve around it. Mm, mm. But like, no, there's no way to make an actual like denim koozie. So it's just like a cover made out of denim. Well, but, shit. I, he that's the guy. If he's gonna get one, it's him. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Jean shorts uh, on a on a koozie. I like it. Jean shorts on a koozie would be great. Uh, condoms, you know, that are usable on a koozie. Where it's just what do you like, mean that are usable? If you're drinking, because look at look, a koozie is very spring. Like break. a Pez dispenser. Yeah, they just pop out of the bottom. Right, boom, right there, and you can just mm. you know, boom, you go from drinking to fucking pretty immediately. Let's say you're in Havasu. Have you <clears> been to Lake Havasu by any chance? I have not. No. Oof. Have you been to Padre, uh, South Padre Island? Let's go, Padre. Nope. Uh, both of those, right? You you can go from I, a. S- I've I've seen videos from from South Padre. Yeah, though. I have a lot of friends. You can there. go from one sip like this to an insert of your penis in three seconds in the, into somebody. I feel like you should just add at that point, just add a camera onto the thing because it's it's rigid, it's upright. Just it'd put it on the great. thing. Great, and and look, it would be it'd be the exact height and angle you need. Yeah, for sure. You to, could definitely suction a GoPro on it. Oh yeah, big time. Yeah. Sides, so yeah, so could you, work. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, so you could get the consent up front and then get the video on the back. One hundred percent. Monetize that however you feel like. Go to Pornhub. Everybody's making Pornhub quarantine videos. Have you seen these? I have not. No. Really? Are you a big Pornhub guy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. No. no. <laughs> uh, I'll peruse on there just to uh, keep up with the trends. You know, I want to be in the know. <laughs> I hate to walk into a conversation not knowing things. And yeah, uh, yeah. Pornhub's got a lot of quarantine videos where it's just couples who are going out like into the street and then fucking. Yeah. Um, and it, that's <clears throat> part of the whole jam of like, look, man. Uh, that's that's the sexual excitement. That's the knife to the throat type of deal. Oh, but now, Mm-mm. yeah, yeah. Uh, that now it's like, hey, if we can go out in the middle of a of quarantine stitch and fucking an open field, we've done it. You know, that's that's the biggest excitement we get. It's kind of like the jail door open. You know, and it's like you can leave if you want. Uh, I don't get that analogy. Yeah, no. you do. No. Everybody's so used to being in jail. They're like, oh, I can't leave the fucking jail now. The door is open. Oh, like the goldfish principle. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. So now it's like, all right, great. <laughs> so people are getting off to others that are getting off in the in the the environments they shouldn't be in. Right is that now. where we've come as a, a society? society? Yes. Like we're watching people shop at a store and like, oh, man, my dick's getting hard. It is. Like, like right now, I wouldn't ask. I wouldn't ask Dylan why his fucking mask isn't on right now you know you're outdoors you have no mask on where are you calling in from today i'm actually calling in from my house and i'm inside we, what, what, <laughs> what uh what state? We're, we're in, i'm in denver 
Oh, well, Denver doesn't give a fuck about anything. You can do mushrooms there, smoke weed or whatever. I haven't heard shit out of Denver during this whole sitch, which is great, by the way. I commend it. Um, it's the other bitch-ass states like North Carolina that we're in. We got this fucking governor, real Andy Griffith-type motherfucker who's, you know, uh, like the town mayor who's just like, oh, God, uh, we should all stay inside. It, 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 we're locked in till May 8th. And it's like, <laughs> motherfucker, man, like, put a goldfish up your ass. Let me come stay in your house. Skip and, a pebble down the river. Yeah, like, I feel like I should be able to come. If you order me to stay indoors, I should be allowed to do my indoors time at your fucking house. Yeah. Denver, on the other hand, they're selling mushrooms, uh, weed. You guys got hashish in stores. And yeah. I never say the full word of hash. You know, I usually abbreviate it. But yeah. I'm saying hashish now because we're in these times. You got all the drugs there. Do you do you roll into those shops and say, "All right, give me the quarantine. Give me give me what your best is here." Yeah, bundle. <laughs> yeah, they're having tons of quarantine deals right now, so it's actually a pretty good time to pick up some good deals. It's huge, and there a, a lot of the stores have been sold out. Because Dan's biggest fear during this this whole thing is that the drug dealers are going to go out of business. Yeah, I'm not worried about myself. I could always find shit. Right, right, right. But I'm worried about them. I'm worried about the drug economy. Yes. Because it's a big part of our other economy. Dan worries about the dealers, um, yeah. which, you know, there's two things that Dan's no, known for. Not being a selfish lover mm-hmm. and uh, drug dealers. He loves drug dealers. So I don't intrinsically t- love drug dealers. I just appreciate what they do for us. Uh, obviously. To me, that's a first responder in the war on boredom. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> I'm not a drug dealer. I'm a first responder in the war on boredom. That's right. <laughs> Uh, let me we ask don't you. give drug dealer discounts yet, but I'll, I'll consider it after this call. Yeah, well, there, yeah, it course. Course. there it is. Of course, there it is. There it is. You're welcome, drug dealers. There it is. Uh, do you get do you get down on that? Like Denver's got the best shit. I because I'm an LA guy. We lived in LA for uh, I don't know me and my wife forever. She was born there and raised there. I lived there for about 18 years. Um, I've been to all the places. Denver to me has got it down. They were the first ones to really have it. I down. love Denver, dude. They have so do I. Not, not just their like, not just the drug shit. Who cares about that? But like the the bars there are fucking dope. There's tons of good restaurants. There. Yeah, but it's not like other bigger cities. Like it doesn't have the bullshit that New York and LA has. I love Denver. Rogan's thinking about moving there. Yeah. Well, uh, he's, he's yeah. So I I came from Indiana, like a small town in Indiana, and like everyone's super friendly. Like, it has that small town feel. In Denver, like, it's a big city, but everywhere I go, like, most of the people here are transplants. They're all mm. super friendly. Like, yeah. it's easy to make friends. Yeah. Like, if you go into a bar, you can talk to anyone in there. Like, no one's smug or yeah. whatever. Uh, like, when I go snowboarding or whatever, like, I'll make friends on the, the ski lift on the way up. Like, it's just a cool place. I mean, everyone's pretty chill for, you know, obvious reasons. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I like it. The, so, the real I, estate there is a real motherfucker, though. Oh, it is, yeah. It's it's getting worse, too. Fucking ridiculous. Uh, it's it's yeah, crazy. It's crazy. Have you listened to our show for at, at all before? Uh, I listened to a couple episodes after you guys reached out. So yeah, yeah. So with with episode one hundred, we actually shot that in Denver. Oh boy. Um, we, Bayou Bob's is right down. Yeah, the street, well, Bayou right Bob's now. is closed now. Yeah, they closed. Uh, R.I.P. Right? But uh, yeah. we shot episode one hundred <laughs> there, which is uh, two strangers who had never met before, and they had sex live on air, and we flew them in. We were doing a live show in Denver. Um, <laughs> I forget the name of the venue, uh, the something, uh, Dove, the Soil Dove. That's what we did it at. Uh, comedy venue. Doesn't downtown. ring a bell, but. <laughs> so we, we rented an Airbnb in Denver, and that's where that couple had sex. Um, and to this day, like the, the, the people who own the Airbnb had no idea that that took place there and everything else. Um, but I was surprised at the real estate prices there. Holy shit. They're through the roof. Wait, how did you go from two people getting fucking on camera to real estate prices what was the correlation between those two things here's what happened was it was we were wondered if we could get fined right like after the show came out it blew up there was (laughs) millions and millions of downloads and they were like all right great could they dock us could they take money Mm -hmm. off the house or whatever so we were like well how much is the house yeah the house felt smaller yeah but it was kind of built up and it was an older Mm -hmm. model and when we looked it up it was like seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, and it was like motherfucker i wouldn't pay that much for this house they're, they're pushing everybody out into the hinterland yeah, so mentally, because uh, we had had a few drinks, we were trying to determine whether or not we would owe anything on this um, after having two strangers have sex there. And if anybody would be showing up to the house to, to see where it was. Because let's face it, there's two houses that are famous in America, right? There's the house that Abraham Lincoln was taken to after he got shot and he died in across the street from Ford's Theater. Mm. And then there's that house in Denver where we had two strangers <laughs> who had never met before have sex. I think maybe the White House is a famous house Third. as well. Third. 
Third in America, I would say. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Betsy Ross <laughs> House probably coming in at number four. Uh, what's the real estate like for you? Is it still crazy there? Yeah. When, when was that filmed? Uh, that was in 16? 2016, yeah. I believe, or 2017. Yeah, 2017. So that house is probably yeah. worth like <clears throat> a million now. Oof, like that's ridiculous. Man. It's cra- It's crazy, man. Like this, the townhouse that I'm in right now. So I just rent here. I've been here for a year. Uh, I'm still trying to decide where I just want to be in Denver, yeah. but yeah. Uh, like my rent is super expensive. If I wanted to buy this place, it'd be close to a million dollars though. Jesus and it's Christ. fucking Fuck 1800 off. square feet, 1800 square feet. <laughs> yeah, no, dude, I'm not kidding. That, that. that house like, was 2,400 square like, feet and it was, it was 750. It, it, if you go within downtown Denver, like you don't have any areas really that, that you're going to find a nice house mm. under half a million. Like, and when I say nice, I'm not talking big. I'm just talking like not a piece of shit. Like yeah, yeah, it could sure. be a 1500 square foot house. If it's semi nice, and if you have a garage that adds on like another hundred K, but it's crazy here, man. Like we I'm s- going to end up just buying land like 45 minutes from here and building yeah, a no place shit, eventually. Right. Uh, so you said you've been there a year. Were you in uh, Indiana before that? Yeah. So we're in Indiana, and and, and also are you? You said a, Colts a small fan? town. You said a small town. Do you know where Greenwood, Indiana is? It's like south of Indianapolis. You probably have no idea. I it's, had a it's gr- like 30, thirty minutes south of Indianapolis. Yeah, I had a Greenwood once. It was on Panama City Spring Break. Uh, I was a junior in high school, and uh, all green. You're a dick. Yep, whole what pecker. Happened? Whole pecker turned green. Was it was it March seventeenth? No, uh, it was not St. Patrick's Day. It was uh, during spring break. Whole dick turned green. Um, you know, 18 days later, turned white again. Antibiotics are amazing. They uh, are. So are you a Colts fan? Do you like football? No, not really. What do you like? <laughs> you said that under your breath as if you were ashamed by it. You, you... No, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, I, like, I like going to games. I like the experience. So I like to, to go to games and tailgate and stuff like that. But I just don't really follow like any specific team. I got you. I got you. Well, look, I'm hey. more. I'm more of a, of a doer. Like I've got dirt bikes. I snowboard. Like I just prefer to actually like go out and do things. And uh, I'm a I'm doer. Not huge on like. We had a we had a porn star on the show maybe two <laughs> months ago. That was her exact quote too. I don't know if that's a Pinterest thing, but she said I'm a doer. <laughs> it's like I'm I'm not gonna watch people fuck. I'm a doer. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, uh, this is this point in the show. Can we you got blame some, her though? I can't, dude. Not at all. Um, it's Katie Cush, by the way. And if you're if you're following her on Instagram, good luck. Fun times. She's got a weird freckle in a weird place. Uh, this is, we got some sponsors who pay for this show to be on the air. Um, surprisingly, let me ask you this. Is there any way we could throw a promo code uh, to our listeners? Do you guys do that on Brewmates? Uh, yes. Yeah, so I can just make one up, and then I can activate it after the show. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. Let's do Drinking Bros. Go to go to Brewmate.com, and uh, we'll do Drinking Bros. How many? What's the percentage you usually give off on these things? Uh, let's do 15% because they get leaked within like 48 hours. So yeah, we gotta do. Keep it. Right. Go to brewmate.com, B R U M A T E.com. Promo code Drinking Bros will get you 15% off. Best in the biz, man. I'm going to fucking order these. Like, they're the only ones making these size. So they're, they're, they have, that's why we called them and we're like, hey, let's just get this guy. But in the it's show. not just uh, for the slim cans, they have everything. Like, any I kind of anything that. that you can drink out of, they make I'm something to put slim in. I'm drinking slim cans these days. I yeah. So we've got, we've got the Juggernaut, which is for 24 and 25 mm-hmm. ounce cans, and then also fits 22 ounce bomber bottles. We've got the Twist, which is for a 16 ounce aluminum bottles. Uh, so, like Budweiser, Mick Ultra. Um, and then we've got the Hop Slater Trio, which fits 16 ounce cans, 12 ounce cans, 16 ounce aluminum bottles. So Coors and Miller. And then it also fits 16 ounce German bottles, uh, which are like the bigger 16 ounce glass bottles. We've got the Hop Slater bottle, which is for 12 ounce glass bottles. And then the Slim, which is for a 12 ounce Slim can. Now, have you made anything for a 40 ounce yet? Not yet. Now, like you should see the Juggernaut. I wish I had one right here, but it's so big, like. <laughs> It's very difficult to hold with just one hand. <laughs> if I made one for 40 ounce, like you would have to be double fisting. Yeah. Uh, and it would weigh like two pounds. <laughs> empty. Everything you just described <laughs> is my life, brother. It's, du- it's two hands, it weighs two pounds, and yeah. you got to double fist it to get it in. Yeah. Uh, go to brewmate.com, B R U M A T E.com. Promo code Drinking Bros, 15% off there i'd love to see them add a fleshlight to the bottom of this you know so after oh, you're done drinking it we know the guy that owns fleshlight you can fuck it yeah you can, i can hook you up with that guy that'd be great dude a yeah. nice little a nice little crossover think about it just workshop it that's off the cuff right now but you can take that idea for free next up we got <laughs> ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros 
Finest mattress in the biz, 25% off all through the quarantine. <laughs> Best mattress I've, I've, I've ever had sex on in my entire life. Yeah, I've spilled quite a few uh, seltzers on my on my bed. Damn right. And he's got a cover for it. Now I've got a cover, yeah. you got a cover for it. <laughs> they got covers. they got pillows. they got mattresses, sheets, adjustable bases. You name it. Everything is 25% off. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Uh, and as always, they got that 36-month pay-as-you-go program. No interest there. So if you get that stimulus check, that'll knock it down about 25 bucks a month. You might as well quarantine in comfort, especially if you're in Washington. They're on, under lockdown until <laughs> fucking July. Uh, Oregon. Ugh. I don't know about Washington, but Oregon put out uh, July 6th. Gross. Like right after the July 6th. Two 4th days weekend. after 4th I'm telling of July. You, dude, there's no fucking way. They're trying That's to butt fuck happen. Benjamin yeah. Franklin with something like that. Well, he was really into electricity. So. He, goddamn right he and was. And French whores. Imagine when you came and you just electrocute yourself. Imagine that orgasm. No, that, people, do that. That people do I, that. People do that. I know they do that. Yeah. I like that a lot. Uh, next up, by the way, we got, a, we got a boner pill on the show. Are yeah. you going to blush up on that? Oh, I'm good, man. Send me some. You've been good the rest of the show, so <laughs> yeah. I'd imagine you wouldn't blush up on a boner pill. Yeah. GetRoman.com forward slash drinking bros. They, look, Roman has overtaken Viagra. Did you know that? I did not know, but it yeah. doesn't surprise me. Well, because they ship in the mail, so you don't have to go to the fucking doctor. So all you do is you go to the website, fill out the five questions, bing, bing, bong, boom. Boner pills in the mail, 48 hours, mm -hmm. discreet packaging, your, your mom, your wife, your kids, your mistress. No one knows you have these. And I, it doesn't even matter if you have erectile dysfunction. You can just take them recreationally and just have fun, you yeah. know? Denver's a fun town, man. Uh, a lot of I, – I can see you hooking up a lot on Tinder. Are you married there? I have a girlfriend that lives with me. Oh, you know, she'll love you even more if you get some Roman had, and flowing through your he blood. To, he had to add the last part she lives with me so we would know as dudes not to say something too fucked exactly. up. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, she, oh, she's upstairs? <laughs> yeah, goddamn right. I can't ask you about a standing up reverse 69 with a stranger, and I won't. I won't oh, do wait, that. Reverse 69 is two dudes eating each other's asses. Well, though. you can also do it with a girl and eat her ass <laughs> as well. Ass eating season has been extended through the quarantine because you're not outside. Right. There's no chance of infection. Although Jared did get he got a coli, coli obviously, but is, that was from fucking chickens. And you don't shit, know that so. he could have gotten it from eating ass. He's got a new girlfriend. Yeah, I met her. She well, she parties like that. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, and if you're looking to party at home, go to getroman.com forward slash drinker bros today and get your boner on. Free shipping. Boner pills will be in your mailbox in 48 hours. Last but not least, we got KillCliffCBD.com. Mm. Now, this is the best in the biz. Are you a CBD guy? Yeah. Yeah, these 25 milligrams in every can, and it's Kill Cliff. They're famous as shit. So it's not like you're getting something from China that's going to be shipped to your house, and you're like, what the fuck is in this? Uh, this is legit shit across the board. You will not piss hot um, for any THC in this if you're a, mili if you're a military first responder out there. Uh, thirty percent off with the promo code Drinking Bros at KillCliffCBD.com. This is the last day of it, D'Anthony. It's Mother's Day. Yep. <clears throat> this this show is airing on Mother's Day, by the way. So if you want to say something to your mother, or probably never tell her the show existed. Yeah. Now's the time. Yeah. Just tell her in private to not watch this. That's yeah. what I do. Yeah. That's her gift. That'll be her gift. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go to KillCliffCBD.com today. Three amazing flavors. Uh, you get 30% off and free shipping. Makes it cheap as shit. Knocks it down to like fucking $2.50 a can. The best in the biz, man. If you're in the quarantine and uh, you're, you're tired of your wife and children, this will fucking numb out the pain, <laughs> my dude. Uh, they have a slim can, by the way. So the Kill Cliff CBD will fit in your slim can case to keep it cold. Um, you should... Hey. Yeah, these guys are the best, man. Uh, they're on. They're our sports sponsor for the entire year. We're we're just gigantic fans, anyways. But like the fact that everybody's doing these, what's the? Do you know why? Like I, I know I asked you that at the top, um, but what is, is there more to it than that? Like, did they come up with some it, sexy thing where it, they're like? It, it just started with ergonomics, and then it kind of turned into like the popular can side. Like it's the it can, so like every brand kind of feels like they have to have some version. It's like Dasani makes fucking water and yes. a slim can. Like yes. Coca Cola makes Coke and a slim can. Like every company has some variation of slim cans. And then for the brands that were like really late to the game, uh, they like all released their own seltzers or bought up some of the existing seltzer mm -hmm. brands to add that in their portfolio. So like Anheuser Busch came in and bought up like Bon and Viv and a few other guys, um, you know, and, and then tried to do their whole natty seltzer thing and regular cans. 
Um, yeah, because they're, they're doing it regular cans. Like terrible. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm torn on it. To be honest with you, like as a dude, it, I almost want a bigger can to feel like a dude again. No, I like it. I'm already oh, drinking. But, oh come, come on! Like you're already drinking a That's fucking seltzer. Like the can size isn't the problem. So mm. like if you're gonna own drinking a seltzer, then like drink out of a slim can. But aside from that, like it literally tastes like carbonated Nyquil. Like it was the worst seltzer I've ever tried. I we we sponsor a, a <laughs> seltzer festival. It's a legitimate thing. So it is, it's called Fizz Fight and they, uh, it's like a beer festival, but with 50 different, uh, vendors that all make their own hard seltzers. Really? So I've tasted like We've every hard here. seltzer on the planet and theirs was by far one of the worst. I'm going to, I'm going to throw one into the mix and I hate to throw them under the bus, uh, for Loco. Mm. So we were, Dan and I were like, yo, we got to get this. We got to get this. It became a mission for a fucking year. Yep. We finally mm. went to, cause we go to a, like the biggest sporting events we used to before the fucking Chinese virus came. Um, <laughs> We used to go to every every two weeks. We go to the biggest one. The Four Loco was always the unicorn out there, where it was just like, "Hey, man, how do we get this?" The Four Loco seltzer was twelve, you know, twelve proof in a in a can, and I had that, and I felt like I was tasting my grandfather's cough syrup, like off the back of a circus fucking wagon, where it was like, <laughs> "Step right up, here you go. This will take away all your pain." It's like snake oil in a fucking bottle. Like, what are the ingredients? He's like, I don't even know. We finally got it in Bernie, Texas, <laughs> yeah. when we were going to Jared's house, mm-hmm. and uh, God damn it, that was the worst I've ever had. So I, I enjoy Natty Seltzer, like that's okay for me, um, but the, the Four Loco man was really tough to chug down. I'm I'm not a huge fan of seltzers, anyways. To be honest, uh, I do like truly more than any of them. And then Crook and Marker is also really good. Mm, okay, um, but those are like the only two. We're actually developing our own seltzer right now. So fun fact on uh, Valent or on uh, April Fool's Day. So last year at the seltzer festival, I tasted like I don't even know how, like way too many seltzers, 150 probably. Wow. And and I went through and they're all sweet and like I'm not a huge sweet person. I am a, a, a tequila person and I like pickleback. So like mm. I like drinking tequila pickle juice. I was like, someone should make a pickle seltzer. And so uh, we came up with the idea for really? April Fool's to actually like fake launch a pickle seltzer. Yeah. And ended up like getting a shit ton of traction. We had over 10,000 people sign up for our email list to be notified when it comes out. And so now we're actually working with one of the major seltzer brands to bring it to life on a collaboration. So there's going to be a pickle seltzer coming out. You're kidding. The end of the year. What's the fascination with that? I've seen pickle, pickle chips. Dude, I don't know. People just love pickles. I mean, I like pickles, so I'm guilty of it too. But <laughs> to be honest, like it, it's a really good mixer. So we've made our own prototypes here. We took uh, like White Claw Pure and yep. then made it with a bunch of different pickle juices just to kind of see what it even tastes like and see if it would be worth it even having conversations about and it was like if you like pickles it was so good it was super refreshing Mm. crisp finish and like it worked really good as a mixer so like i was using it to make bloody marys and shit like yeah that was i don't know yeah yeah i mean i i i think that one on the premise of it just being a novelty like you walk down a target aisle and see a pickle seltzer like people are gonna buy it just to have it um and to like it's our name is going to be on it so it's going to be like a limited release so we'll be pushing our customers out to get this i'll kind of be like a collector's item is it going to be called brewmate uh so it'll be a collaboration so i can't say who we're working with yet but uh one of the major seltzer brands we're working with we're still going through legal right now and kind of making sure that we can actually bring this to life but once it comes to life it'll be a brand collaboration between the two of us that's dope so like it'll have their brand name and ours on the packaging i'd like you know what i'd like to see i'd like to see that black guy uh with the huge dick the meme no he's dead i understand he's dead but i'd like to see a can made out of his penis where it's just that whole dick can like as as the sleeve of it (laughs) that thing would sell gangbusters right now i mean what would you even put in there A bottle of Jameson? Yeah. That's a fucking hammer on that guy. You've been sent a million of those memes, haven't you? Yeah, I, I have. <laughs> the hog have on of, that guy. Like like, like years ago, though. Like I don't know why this just became popular. I don't, I don't either. I, I'm the same way. I've been getting those friend, for years. Literally, yeah. he li- I remember like a few years ago, I literally got a text, and my buddy was like, oh, my God, I can't believe this. Or what the fuck ever. At like 2 in the morning on yeah. like a Saturday. I'm like at the bar and I open this up and there's just like this gigantic fucking dick in front of my face. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, what the fuck is this? I kind of forgot about it until it like resurrected this past year. Yeah. I was like, oh, like I've already seen this. It's old. How news. did it, somebody, we need to hire uh, internet detectives to track how this shit happens. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like how did that come back up? 
I feel like I'd love to see a doc on his entire life tracing back to his family. And then what 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 the doctor said when he was born and that penis came out of the vagina. Do you think he just walked in? Let's face it. The penis came out first. before the rest of that baby body. And it was probably like just like. A fucking coming out for a flame. while, yeah. yeah. It was a, a I, I doubt he said anything. It was probably just a lot of like confusion. Oh, yeah. No, that doctor they, was like, "No." The doctor probably thought that, that she was having <laughs> twins, and it was like, "I'm sorry, it's just your baby's penis." That thing is massive. Um, I mean, look, I'll get caught, you know, late at night staring at that, just gazing at it and being like, "God damn it, man! What do you? What do you even put that in?" So it's like a siren for you. Ah, uh, sort of, but it's like, how do you even fit that in someone? You can't, you know? I look at that, and it's just like, all right, sweet. What's that going inside of? I mean, if you really want to know, go to liveleak.com. Oh, really? What's uh, it's, it's, it's he... I'm not getting into what it is. It's just not Have great. you seen one of his? He was no, a, no, a porn no. star. Oh, was he really? I didn't know that. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. He did, a few, oh. he did a few movies. No, I'm just Have saying. Have you seen that thing go you, inside someone You else? can see a lot of things go inside of a lot of different things Yeesh. on Live Leak. On Live Leak. Including bullets into heads. Really? There's a lot of weird shit over there, yeah. Fuck, dude. Yeah. I haven't gotten down on Live Leak. Do you? Are you a Live Leak guy? I'm not, no. But back in the day, there was a site. I don't even remember the name of it, but there was like a lot of shit like that on there. It was called Ogrish. And it was something. O G R I S H. Ogrish. Yeah. And that's that, right. And that became Live Leak. Oh, it did. Okay. Yes. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, but there's been number there's a there's a bunch of fucked up sites out there like motherless.com for example. What's that one? It's the worst. Don't go there, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst shit on earth. Motherless.com. Yeah, it's bad. It's real bad. It's I, like fucking all the fucked up shit you see on 4chan it comes from motherless. Really? Yes. Yes. It's uh, bad. Are we talking is it porn or is it just like It's a combination of porn and gore and just fucked up weird shit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You, it seems like you've spent a lot of time on it. I just am familiar with it. Because I, the, the, the only one that's bothered me, and I'll, like, I'll watch decapitation videos and all that other shit, you know, just because just I want to feel like I'm in the know um, about what, what's going on in the world. The guy who chopped his penis off and then sliced it up. Oh, that was the BME Pain the pan, Olympics. Yeah. Yes. And then ate it. That, that one's the only one that got me to this day. It's the Pain Olympics, like, yeah. yeah. That's not a thing anymore, I don't think. Okay, and then uh, the other one was the the horse and the guy. There's the only, one where he died. That's the only two videos that have ever gotten me. The yeah. guy goes, <laughs> and he yeah. Dies, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That dude got fucked to death by a horse. Which I, you know, I've explained this on the show before. That used to be a, a torture methodology in ancient Rome. Really, they would put you in stocks and then put uh, female horse pheromones on your on your bee hole. Eesh. And just wait around. And look, to be honest, dying with the dick going all the way up through your lungs is bad enough, but. Imagine the mounting process where his hoofs are clawing your back up. None yeah, of that's yeah, fun. Yeah. No, none of it. There's not a fun part to that, to be no. honest. So what are you going to say? I don't even remember at this point. <laughs> you were talking about a children's we, charity. I'm yeah. totally kidding. <laughs> no. <laughs> Save the children. No, we had, I just, I remember like in middle school, there was a website similar to Live Leak, and it wasn't called Live Leak, but it was like the kids in the sandbox videos, like Meat Spend. Do you remember any yeah, of these? Yeah, yeah. But we would, like, obscure the links, and when we were in, like, computer lab, we would be, like, sending these around through instant messaging to, like, everyone in the classroom, and, like, they would click, and it would, like, pop up on their computer, and we thought it was, like, the funniest thing ever. Imagine what kids are doing now. Everybody's homeschooled with their own Oof. iPad right now. Yeah, Can you man. imagine what they're doing? Look, if you've got a – if you're out there – I, a- ha- I have a child, and, and he's homeschooled, and he uses a laptop. <clears throat> L- luckily, he's only six. Yeah, he's six, but, I mean, I'm talking but about – But he still finds shit that he shouldn't where it's, like yeah. – he, he was talking about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre the other but day. But he like, can't do anything you know he can't do anything with it right now out uh, in, in america right now our fucking tweens and early teen Ugh. boys are pounding off to some weird ass shit right I know, now man like not that that's not usual for uh young boys we get into weird shit when we're young because we don't know what the fuck's going on but it's like but not that weird it's like you got eight hours a day while your parents at work right now if they're going to work yeah to do whatever the fuck you want dude because when we were growing up like we never had sites where it was just like oh hey here's dudes fucking pumpkins we were just like <clears> what <throat> Why do you need to do that? You know, now there's all kinds of shit. Like you get into, you know, extreme strangulation, uh, you know, yeah. reverse 69, reverse 69, yeah. standing up, um, you know, it, it out in public in the snow, that type of shit. Seated uh, scissors. Yeah. Oh, it's one of my favorites. Yeah. Ladder yeah. fails where yeah. it's like, you know, somebody's hopping down off the off a ladder, like 12, 15 feet ladder and then into someone like that's that shit that we just didn't have. We had the basics. You know what I'm saying? Now I think it's going to influence a whole generation of kids where <laughs> by the time they grow up, it's just like if, if, the, if they're still breathing after masturbating, 
They're not satisfied. I you just know? thought you've got to really, choke yourself. I thought of a really good. <laughs> Can you imagine though? <laughs> If that's like one of your fetishes, and then you get in your first real, real relationship, and that's like what you're trying to bring to the table, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like the girl doesn't know, <laughs> like the girl doesn't know that it's normal for she somebody to want to be She has no idea, yeah. and it's just like, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a good idea for a book. It's called A Brief History of Jerking Off. Okay, and it's just like a young boy's journey. Okay, like you monkey know? turning into man. Yeah, yeah. And yeah you go less. through that whole thing. Yeah, just discovering your body. You know, figuring I, out what it does and maybe what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like you can only get off to like the like a, ch- a chainsaw has got to be going off next to you, and that's the only way. you Some can of come. those weird sex things. Yeah. That's the only way you can come. I, I like, mean, oh, no one's ever set guidelines before. I feel like that could be a good idea. Yeah. No, and I was listening to our sister show is the all female version of this uh, last night. Uh, Drinking broettes. Uh, Tiffany was on yesterday. She said she's never come without some use of a toy during sex. Mm. Like, so during normal sex, she's never come. She's got to use some form of a toy. And I was like, it's got to be something in the past. That's Chainsaw, all I kept yeah. thinking when I was listening to it on the radio. I was like, it's got to be, yeah. And I was thinking, all right, cool, man. Like, let's say you grew up and, uh, you know, there was, I don't know, like Mexican lawnmowers, right, outside your house every day. And that's all you heard every day that you were jacking off as a kid. And it's like, shit, somebody's got to strike up a lawnmower just for you to get off. Mm. Um, I, like, that could become a thing. <laughs> Can you imagine if your kid... If your kid's fetish was getting caught, because that's a real fetish, getting caught doing stuff that you're not supposed I, to be doing. There's a lot of porns like yeah, that. Yeah, there's a yeah. ton of them. That's Tons. a huge fetish. Can you imagine if you had like a teenage son and that was his fetish? <laughs> that would ruin your fucking life. Like you wouldn't even yeah, want to well, knock on the door. What would you guys do? How would you handle that? I'd fucking get rid of that kid, man. <laughs> Come on. Like you can't, I can't deal with that. Every time I fucking see, like look around a corner, I'm like pying it off like I'm going through a shoot house or yeah. something. Yeah. Like looking around just to make sure I don't catch my kid jacking off. Listening for and the And he's lawnmower. like looking over his shoulder like, hey. Yeah, he's like, waiting no, for man. you. Come on. You're, you're uh, going to the pound. Oof. Is that where you take kids? No. No, you definitely don't take them to, to, the, the, to the pound. Pound. No, they're not getting rescued. Can you return them like on Amazon? You can put them in a home. I, 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 Alec, you were an orphan, right? Did you get orphaned <laughs> up at all in any moment in your life? Our producer Alec was abandoned by his family. Ba- uh, ba- baby in a basket is what yeah. we call him on the show. Um, yeah. uh, left Just left in a bread basket on, <laughs> underneath somebody's porch. We had a guy on the show, by the way. Dan was oh, going man. all in on, on orphans one day. And this guy walked <laughs> off the show. He was like, oh, I, was, I was an orphan or whatever. And it was just like, like, how would I know that, dude? And yeah. Why, and no... No reasonable human being would just hate orphans. For well, Why would I hate orphans? Yeah. But I went on this long rant about how I hated orphans, and the guy was like, oh, well, just walked away. I'm like, oh, shit, is he an orphan? And it I'll, turns out he was I said that orphan. jokingly. He was like, yeah, yeah. But he actually. was a grown man. It was like, dude, if you haven't gotten over the fact that you were an orphan <laughs> now, like, you know, it wasn't wearing yeah, a Yeah, but, like, a, typically a when you wig. go on a show, you, like, at least know what you're getting yourself into. Like, I, I, I watched a couple of the episodes beforehand, and, and like, I know what you guys do joke you about. Mind? Like, I would never <laughs> take something like that seriously. Do, do you mind me asking which episodes you watched? I just want to get a feel of how bad it was. <laughs> Were we talking about uh, Anne Frank at all? Yeah, because we talk about Anne Frank. We're huge no, so, so first one I clicked on was Colton Underwood. I only watched like mm. 15 minutes of it. Yeah. And then another one I watched, uh, I don't remember the guy's name. The Bachelor, yeah. You go like for the you go for the famous that, ones. So. Yeah, they go for the famous ones. I get that, I get that, uh, and I understand it. No, I, I was just trying to figure out because I was just picking names that I knew. Of course, I was just trying to figure out like what the conversation flow was. No, like no, no, so. of course, and that, I think that's what we all do, kind of, you know. Uh, but unless you get down into the the dirty, you know, the gritty of the shows, uh, the, you don't understand how big of fans we are of Van Frank, you know. Well, I mean, I feel like you're a survivor at this point. Yeah. Like you, you come from a family of survivors. Like half your family was in the goddamn Holocaust, and the other half were in Palestine. Shit. You yeah. Should... What do they think of you selling koozies like to people now? You know, they're like, <laughs> Jesus Christ! I tried to get out of a concentration camp, and you're selling white claw koozies. You know. <laughs> yeah. So my grandma passed away 15 years ago, mm. and then my grandpa passed away a few years ago. So I, I was just starting this company when he passed away. Um, but I was going to Purdue for engineering. So he's super big, like on education. Mm-hmm. So obviously he came from like a little village, like no form of education, came here, really made something of himself. He started his own business. And uh, all of his sons are like doctors, lawyers, whatever, like very successful, all went to college. And I was the first family member to actually drop out of school. So I was like running a business in college and uh, out of my dorm room. And I, 
basically like long story short was on christmas break ended up getting a buyout offer and dropped out of school and he gave me so much shit for like years he kept telling me like i need to go back you know money's not important it's all about education and i get like i i mean i i always got good grades i but i just there's different forms of education so that was like that was pretty hard to explain that like i'm still educating myself just not in like a formal setting right did you ever go back and get that education Nope. Well, you're a failure. Uh, thanks for being on the show. We're <laughs> <laughs> you should get business cards that just say high school or uh, college dropout on it. That'd be dope as fuck. Uh, I was, that'd be great. I was, be. I was, Dude, I've done a lot of shit. And, you know, you were talking about Tiger King earlier. But yeah. I don't. if you watch that documentary, I used to work for Tim Stark. So he's in Indiana towards the Kentucky border. And I worked there for over a year. And no he fucking way. talked about Carol Baskin every day. Like, he told me that story five years ago about how she fed her husband to the tiger. Are like, you when I went into this, kidding me? No, dude, it was fucking hilarious. When we first started watching this episode, I was like, I wonder if Tim's going to be on air because I knew like everyone was posting the Carol Baskin memes. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I was like, I literally knew this story. Like he told, he would tell this story all the time. He fucking hated her. That's really, man, fucking funny. you've got to lead with that at the end of the show. He drops that fucking box. Well, well, <laughs> I mean, it keeps the audience guessing, I guess he's got a couple of tigers over there. Some shit. Yeah. I bet he does. A couple of 25 pounders. I right? got them. I got them from one of the breeders that worked at his facility. Are you fucking They're not serious? Actual tigers. Are they no, but one of the one of the breeders that worked at his facility had Bengals, and she was a Bengal breeder, and that's where I got them. So you have you have two Bengals in your house right now? Mm -hmm. Twenty five pounds a piece. How big are they supposed to get? No, no, no. So not legitimate Bengal tigers. They're Bengal like that. That the type of cat. So they're an Asian leopard cat, mm, okay. uh, which is a, a wild cat mixed with a domestic cat. Now, are you worried at all about getting five of them and them them getting together and making Voltron? I've I've had them for five and six years. I'm not getting any more cats. Oh, so you, what does the girlfriend think of that? <laughs> She's got two cats too. Oh, God. like like regular cats or those kind? Yeah, they're regular, and we have to keep them separate. So, like, <laughs> if my cats try and kill her cats, literally, so they're they're separate in different parts of the house, and they never see each other. Wow, dude! I, four cats is a lot for a house. I'm not really into that whole segregation it, thing, though. To be honest, me neither. It is, it, it's weird. So, Very so racist. my ex girlfriend had a dog. I had, a, I didn't have any animals. Um, I just have a busy lifestyle. I travel a lot, and I didn't have time for pets. So, I was doing this uh, volunteer work at Wildlife in Need, and I was literally working with tigers. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And uh, this girl brought in her Bengal uh, to the Wildlife in Need one day on a fucking leash and like let the thing off the leash and it was like bouncing off the walls and playing fetch and like playing with the dog and stuff and i was like oh cool like this is this is a cool animal like if i were to get an animal you know i couldn't get a dog because i don't have time for one but like cats are pretty easy right mm -hmm. so i got a cat and like him and the dog were best friends and then me and mike still broke up and then it was like alone and then it was like depressed and shit so then i was like i either get a dog or a cat but again like i travel a lot i don't have time for a dog so I ended up getting another cat, and then I, I now have two cats. And then I met her, and on our first date, she was like, yeah, I have two cats. And I was like, fine. So we have, we have four. Well, How long have you guys been together? Uh, two and a half years. Oh, yeah, nice. that's not going to last. That's not gonna last. <laughs> uh, look, you can't we leave. Have, we're, we're finally at a point where like I'm get, where we want to get a dog, but I'm like, four cats and a dog? Like I need a bigger place. Nope. Yeah, yeah you just need to get rid of all of those things. <laughs> no, uh, I like one. I like the animals. I like I'm a big fan. Cats. You're though? just a little bit of crystal meth and a mullet away, brother. Yeah, that's it, man. <laughs> a pair of jorts. Yeah, you're uh, so close right you're now ready to living to, the American you're dream. You're ready to kill a white woman's husband, dude. Uh now's the point in the show <laughs> we get to the drinking bro of the week, which is someone who has helped you or inspired you to become the man you are today. Who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to? Uh it would be my grandfather. Who's, who's not proud of you right now? It's a yeah, I think he'd kidding. be proud now. <laughs> yeah, I think he's – those those first-generation guys, it's all formulaic, like fucking education, education, education. Yeah. Education. yeah. It's always yeah, like he, that. But, like, I grew up with him. He had his own successful business in India, and I grew up with him, like, working – like, I looked up to him. So, mm -hmm. like, he was the one that kind of, like, installed that gene into me. Yeah. So, like, I wouldn't even be where I am today without that. So even though he didn't approve – because he just knew, like – being a business owner is not easy. Like, like starting something from the ground up, managing it, like that's not easy. No. He just wanted like stabilization, right? Like you, you come from a country where like you don't have stability. You come here, like you get education, you get a good paying job, you have stability, you raise a family. 
Like that's how he wanted everyone to be raised because he wanted everyone to be stable. So me leaving was scary because it was not stable, right? Like there's no guarantee that that's going to pay off for a workout. Um, so it wasn't like, you know, have anything against entrepreneurship. It was just, you know, for me specifically, he wanted to make sure that I was stable and yeah. So no, nah, no, nah, it makes sense, man. Uh, Dylan Jacob, we appreciate you being on the show. Not Jacob Dylan from the Wallflowers. No, way. not at all. We want to clarify that. I'm sure you've never heard that. Um, that guy gets so much pussy, though. Let's face it. You would not be having a girlfriend with two cats if you were fucking Bob Dylan's kid, right? Dude, I, there's I, another I, kid. He's like a 17-year-old rapper named Dylan Jacob. Oh, and. Oh. And he fucking, our Wikipedia's get matched up occasionally. So, like, <laughs> when you look up me, it'll say, like, American product designer. And yep. it'll show this, like, 17-year-old fucking rapper as the picture. <laughs> you, you should just lean into it and start telling me, yeah. Is he weird. white or black? He's like Latino or something, white, is he? But I get DMs all the time, too. People are like, oh, I look up to you. Like, your music, like, inspires me, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> like, I, man, just attention. start taking credit, man. DMing. Oh, I, he, I love that that new mixtape beat that pussy up man super proud of you dude big ups is he white or black he's What's, 16 year old or 17 18 should be 18 by now or okay. almost 18 uh I'm not asking his age asking that race he looks like he might be latino to me okay so uh yeah but he's not black all right is he good looking or not he is a good looking kid okay so at least it's a good looking dude <laughs> and you're if you're getting swapped up with anyone at least it's him and it's not you know like the elephant man where it's just like oh shit there yeah it's Still in Jacob, aka the Elephant Man again. Oh, you know? It's also you. You got to pray that that dude doesn't do something super fucked up. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah, like I rape. Because then it's like the SEO game after that is all uphill. <laughs> and then it's all rape. Yeah. Dylan Jacob, rapist. Like oh, the people Four start. Cats, I'll change rapists. my name. Yeah. This isn't my inherent name, man. Like I'll change that yeah. shit yeah. real quick. <laughs> I'll add. I'll add a fucking S to yeah. that. No. Yeah, yeah, I'm just Jingleheimer Schmidt. His name is my well, name, just, too. I'll make it Jacob Dylan. I'll just swap the names. It won't be that big of a change. Fuck no, not at all, dude. It's like you're <laughs> reading out this roll call to DMV. Fucking, he's English. Just moving around a comma. This, yeah. <laughs> this, this guy's from uh, Dylan Jacob, the rapper is from England or some shit. Congratulations, You should be able to. We won what? that war. You should be able to take he's, he's like He's like a Las Vegas street rapper. Yeah, is he like, really? I, I looked him up because I was like, who the fuck is this kid? Yeah. And if you go on YouTube and type in his name, he like he when you go to uh what's the the shitty part of Vegas? What's that name of that? Oh, Fremont Street? Yeah. Yeah. So he like raps on Fremont Street. Oh shit. Okay. There's a guy down there that'll let you kick him in the balls repeatedly for like twelve dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so, I saw that guy. That's how good of a rapper. I spent, he is. A, I spent 144 <laughs> bucks with him one night. That's how good of a rapper <laughs> yeah, this guy is. I kicked him in the nuts twelve times. Uh, Dylan Jacob, man, we appreciate you being here. Go to brewmate.com, b r u m a t e dot com. Promo code Drink It Bros, fifteen percent off there. Appreciate you being on the show and spending some quarantine time with us, man. This was fun. Yeah, thanks for having me on the show, guys. Yeah, man, it was great. Awesome, man. Have a great day. For D'Anthony D'Anthony Holloway, Dylan Jacob, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.